Today I'd like to talk about how to properly dockerize WordPress. There is an official WordPress image and uh, this is what you guys see here. This is the deployment descriptor for that for Kubernetes and there is also an official MySQL image. Uh, you guys can just run uh, kubectl create-f and uh, give it the script and it's going to set it up which is what I did. If I go here um, to, the, to my shell window and I say kubectl I'm using GCTL, that's my own script, it's just calling kubectl. Um, if I say gctl get pods, I already have WordPress running uh, as two Docker containers. One is MySQL, the other is WordPress. So the question is, how do, how do I replace this WordPress container that I have running here with one that can do SSL? Because the official Docker image can do SSL. Um, I, I thought about this for a while and it's not a simple problem. Uh, the way I was able to eventually solve it is that, uh, oh, okay, so first let's, let, let me explain why this is a complicated problem. It's a complicated problem because the way, uh, the way Docker works is that typically you have one, one process, one main process for a Docker container. So in this case, it, that Docker, the main process is the Apache web server. That's what the official uh, Docker image for WordPress runs. Now, when you try to install your keys or do any other configuration changes, you have to cycle the web server, but you, you won't be able to do that because if you cycle the web server, you're going to crash the Docker container. So the way I was able to make this work, and I described this in this article, is that you have to create a, 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 a two-step process to, um, to uh, make, SS, uh, make your uh, WordPress Docker image SSL capable. The first one, just uh, basically just a bare-bone WordPress image, and all it does each, each one of these steps has its own Docker file. All this first step does is that, let me show you guys, uh, is that it copies in CertBot. But CertBot, all you have to, to know is that it's a tool from Let's Encrypt and it's capable of generating certificates for a server as long as you run it on the server where you need the certificate. So DNS has to be set up, the domain name already has to be associated with the server. And then if you run CertBot there, um, it, it works with the Let's Encrypt servers to figure out if you really have access to, to, to prove that you really have access to that server and, and it gets you a certificate and it saves it for you all automatically and free of charge. So that's why we copied it in there. In this first step, our only goal is to generate this certificate. So I'm going back to my shell window and I run, um, I, 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 I build a Docker container for this first phase, this first image, and I also push it to, uh, Docker Hub. So this script does two things. It builds the container and pushes it. But I can actually show you guys the script, what it looks like. So Docker build, uh, it's using the first Docker file, it pushes it, into, uh, pushes it to Docker Hub. Then um, uh, once I have that, once I have that, I go back to my deployment descriptor here. Uh, because I'm no longer using the official image, I, I have to um, I, I have to use um, WordPress HTTP because that's the image I just created and uh, I, I cycle my uh, Kubernetes, Kubernetes installation so basically I'm killing the old container and I'm recreating it from this new image it's gonna pull it from Docker Hub so you guys see delete deployment app WordPress and then kube control uh, create the new uh, uh, container from this uh, descriptor, which I changed to the image we just created, and hit enter. Um, so once it's done with that, if I do kube control, ctl get pods, the new um, container is already installed with the new image. If I go back to my blog, is gone, right? Because this is just a really bare bone thing that I installed there. There's no HTTPS, nothing. Uh, I was actually running the HTTPS version already, so obviously I did this already. Um, so now that I installed this intermediary container, there's nothing there, but it does have servbot inside. So if I say um, uh, kube control, I give it the uh, WordPress uh, pod ID. Um, I have to put exec it WordPress pod ID and then bash. 
Then inside here, I can run another script that I created at um, a user local bin get initial serve. This, uh, take a look at the script. What this does, it, it basically ca uh, calls certbot, uh, a, a version of certbot. Certbot auto um, generates the certificates uh, for, the, uh, for the domain name that I pass in. I'm, I'm taking it from an environment variable, which I, I pass in from, from the deployment descriptor. It's, it's defined here. So once it, runs, once it runs this command, I'm going to have my certificates. Everything's going to get done automatically. First, it's, uh, it's uh, loading up all the, uh, pa the packages it's depending on. And um, it's going to uh, go out to uh, uh, Let's Encrypt and create a challenge. Okay, so it created a challenge. And what, what's happening now is it's encrypt servers come in, uh, check if uh, it can find, they can find the challenge that they sent to us uh, at the address that they expect to find it at. And if they can, they issue a certificate. And at this point, as you guys can see, you already have the certificates. Congratulations. Uh, your certificates have been saved in Etsy, let's encrypt live single.com full chain .pam. So what we need to do is at, at this point, this container is no longer useful for us. It already created the keys we wanted. It uh, actually, it even saved it onto our persistent um, disk that we set up in our deployment descriptor. Now we are ready to create our second Docker container. We have our keys saved on our persistent volume. All we have to do is create a Docker file that starts up Apache uh, with uh, an SSL configuration that points to those keys. This is a little tricky because um, I, I, if, if you guys look at these commands, what, what it takes to set up Apache to, to do SSL is that, well, you have to give it the certificates. You have to copy them in a location where it can find them. And then you have to create a site configuration file, or, or you, you can put it actually anywhere in Apache. Um, uh, you can, you can put, the way Apache works is that configuration can be put in a number of places. It makes sense to create a configuration file uh, for your SSL site, which is what I did here. I called it syncrasssl.conf, uh, and uh, you put it into um, sites available. And what you do is, if, if, if you look inside uh, this file, syncrasssl.conf, you can see that I'm pointing to my, uh, my full chain PAM and my PRIV key PAM. This is what Apache expects. So it expects to have this configuration file for the site, for, for port 443 for SSL or HTTPS. And it expects, you, it expects this file to point to valid certificates. Now, uh, when I create the Docker image, um, when this starts up, I, 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 I initially, uh, because, because I don't have access to the keys at this point, the keys are on our persistent disk, and uh, when the Docker image is built, I'm in my development environment. In order for me not to have to copy the keys out of my persistent disk, uh, I could have done that as well, manually copied it out, copied them out, and then manually copied them into the second container. Instead of doing that, I can actually just fool it by uh, copying an empty file, adding an empty file at the path location where it's going to expect to find the keys, and then point to that location in syncra-ssl.conf, and now I say start up as the SSL module. This is going to start up 443, start listening to 443, and start up the site, Syncra SSL. Um, this worked for me uh, because uh, I can build a Docker image like this, but when it actually starts up the container based on this Docker image, uh, because of how the deployment descriptor is, it has uh, the HTTPS deployment descriptor, uh, that's what we're looking at now. It has a volume de a definition, right? And the HT and we build the HTTP uh, version with the same volume definition. So 
whatever keys were saved, the HTTPS Docker container will also have access to, right? So when this Docker file is actually, when you create the, uh, the container, right, when you generate the image, it's just going to put empty files where the certificate should be. But when the container is actually started up uh, uh, with the image, based on the image, it's going to attach the volume uh, uh, to it based on the, the, uh, the descriptor and um, uh, the deployment descriptor. And it will override these empty files with the valid keys. I hope that makes sense. So basically, it's a trick that uh, we can solve this chicken egg problem because otherwise I would have to have the certificates uh, in my development environment. I, I, and I don't want to go through all that manual stuff. So this, is, this takes care of uh, 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 starting up Apache with SSL and it, it works fine. Another thing that this Docker container will have that's extra compared to the, the first uh, HTTP version is that this one uh, also copies in renew cert, which is a script I, re I wrote. Uh, it, just, it just basically calls certbot auto renew i show you guys what this looks like. Uh, it, 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 copies the it copies the certificates from our persistent location into um, uh, the Let's Encrypt location and then runs renew, certbot renew, and then copies whatever ends up in Etsy Let's Encrypt back to our persistent location. So let me explain for this back and forth copying. The reason for this is that uh, uh, Let's Encrypt expects to find uh, the certificates and everything that it created under Etsy Let's Encrypt. This is how it can find the previously created certificates so it can be intelligent about renewing. When you run this renew script from Crontab, well, what's going to happen is that you just run it daily and it looks at Etsy Let's Encrypt. That's where it likes to find it, the, uh, the previous certificates and whatever else it created, the account with uh, uh, the Let's Encrypt uh, 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 website, everything everything should be there because Renew is looking for that. It's going to look at what you've already done and it will simply be a null op. It will not do anything if uh, it's not time to Renew. So it works out really nicely as long as it can find the information that it had created yesterday. Today when you run it, it will only do something if it has to. And this way you can just keep running it daily from Crontab. So that's the reason that I make sure that I'm, I'm, I have uh, the, the information uh, copied into uh, Etsy Let's Encrypt to keep uh, Certbot happy. That's what it expects to find it. So um, now that we understand that, I just want to show you guys the Crontab file that I created for this. Um, it runs every, every day at 10 o'clock. And it runs the renew script, uh, and of course, uh, um, the Docker file starts up, starts up um, cron. Uh, so that's all there is to it. And now we're ready to um, to uh, generate the second image based on the Docker file I just explained. Um, I will say uh, build WordPress HTTPS this time. As if you guys remember, the scripts first build the new Docker container and, they, and then they push it to uh, Docker Hub. It's very important that this second container be pushed into a secure container on Docker Hub. Uh, it has to be password protected because it has the keys in it. It has your uh, keys in it that you just generated. Now we just have to do the last step. We've done, done all this hard work. Um, the deployment descriptor is fine. Uh, we created the image, we deployed it onto Docker Hub, uh, we made sure we password protected the second Docker image because it has our keys. All we have to do now is swap out the old installation of WordPress with the new one. And you guys remember this command, um, delete the old deployment and create a new one. New container um, will reference uh, the HTTPS version that we've just created, that we just pushed to Docker Hub. And because we pushed it into a private repository, uh, you have to remember to include this image pool secret because without that, 
it's not going to um, it's not going to let you pull the image into Kubernetes engine. And once I do this, I can go back to my blog, and uh, HTTPS will work. It just takes a while because it's still deploying the pod. Once it's finished deploying, HTTPS will come up and the blog will work. One final word, this only, all of this work only enables your Docker container uh, running WordPress to be SSL capable. In other words, it's kind of like um, setting up a box, uh, like a Unix box uh, with SSL keys and setting up a patch with SSL keys. WordPress doesn't know yet that it can do SSL. So the final very important step is that you go into WordPress and uh, you, you change the settings to use SSL. There are a number of ways to do it. You can look at the article for uh, my article for some details on this, but you definitely have to tell WordPress because it will not be using SSL if, uh, if, if, if you uh, don't make those configuration changes. If this video helped you setting up SSL for your WordPress in installation, for your Dockerized WordPress installation, please don't forget to subscribe. It will allow me to make more of these videos and help more people. Thank you.